Yeah, I don't have uh, really much of an outline put together, anything beyond what I what I sent you for some topic ideas. So just figure I'll hit record and, and roll with yeah, it. Yeah, we could just spun. Yes, yeah, roll with it. Spun, spontaneity is the best way to do these kinds of things. So it's just kind of it's kind of weird that I just see a big S on the screen. That's that's new. But hey, <laughs> I record videos all the time, so I'm used to just talking to a screen. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, probably not the uh, I guess the the best. Uh, I, I should probably get a second camera, but I tr I'm trying to. Uh, I'm in the process right now. Um, this year, I've been uh, detecting. Um, I've uh, made the joke that I'm, I'm trying to take my my uh, homestead back to uh, like 1920s because um, the technocracy mm. rolled out, and I I kind of had a visceral reaction earlier this year and just kind of shunned all technology. It wasn't the best idea, but I I kind of uh, just drew back for for a little while. Um, but uh, <laughs> got gotcha. you. Nick getting back into it anyway I, I feel you yeah i feel you man yeah right on so i guess i'll, I'll do a, a quick uh, quick introduction here and uh, then uh, we'll get rolling so yeah for for the, for the listeners yeah welcome to the vani podcast the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society uh, i'm your host shane coming to you from the free, free republic of pasnia the self operators paradise pasnia.com uh so today i've got a uh, an interesting a uh, very, very interesting guest, uh, someone I, I came across just recently on uh, on Fascist Tube uh, via another content creator over there, um, was uh, really, really impressed. Uh, I always love to come across uh, new, uh, I guess, uh, new content creators from the anarchist perspective, and uh, he happens to be on, uh, I guess, uh, talking about a number of subjects I've stumbled stumbled across, um, not uh, not on purpose uh, by any means. Um, this past, uh, you know, the past year um, in, in the realm of uh, natural law and spirituality. And uh, with spirituality, it seems, uh, you know, it's, uh, the investigation has led to Jesus and other things, too. So, it's, uh, you know, history, all sorts of there, very interesting uh, topics. And uh, my guest uh, today, Lawrence uh, Watson, has been uh, talking about a lot of these uh, very, very interesting things. So, uh, without further ado, uh, um, Lawrence, uh, welcome to the Vani podcast. Uh, um, I guess I should have mentioned uh, your YouTube channel is uh, The Principle of Care. Um, yeah, welcome welcome to uh, the podcast, and uh, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me, Shane. I really appreciate it. Oh, hey, not a problem at all. Not a problem at all. So I guess, um, really, I, I, I guess I, I just start with a brief introduction. You, you do kind of, you do have the uh, the Derek Bros holistic anarchism shirt on, which is great. Um, but uh, um, I figured, uh, you know, Vanu is a, is, is a new to a lot of folks. So I'll give you kind of a brief introduction, to kind of give you an idea of who you're talking to um, in terms of my, my audience. So uh, Vanu is uh, premised around, it's a, it's a freedom strategy, basically. Um, and uh, it's premised around becoming as invulnerable to coercion as humanly possible. So um it's done by way of radical lifestyle changes, like uh, I have a, a homestead here, uh, in southern uh, uh, here in Fr the Free Republic of Pasnia, um, southern Illinois is where it's uh, where it is. Um, that's uh, you know one one possible lifestyle change. Uh, van nomads and perpetual traveling, intentional communities, um, all sorts of uh, things like that. But the idea is to um, become as invulnerable to coercion as uh, as possible. And uh, just basically self liberation is uh, is what it's called. So um, the uh, the audience uh, we've got uh, people who have uh, I guess uh, already they're already um, I'd say beyond anarchism to the point where um, you know we're we're living liberated lifestyles or we're in the process of liber li living liberated lifestyles. Um, and uh, kind of the way that I view it is, and I've talked I've talked about this for for a number of years, um, but really just getting people out of the survival society is what I, what I call it. Um, just what, what I call the, I guess, just um, the, the, the Babylon, whatever you want to call it, the survival society. Um, getting people out of the survival society, out of those 40, 50 hour work weeks where people have so many distractions, they can't, there's no possible way they can think about these big topics, right? Like you need a lot of time to decompress from all of that nonsense. And you need a lot of time to think. Um, it takes a lot of time to do these things, right? To work through, um, you know, 20 something years of uh, trauma or not, yes, not really trauma, but just 20 years of bullshit I've done to myself, um, you know, for, for it's, it's, a, it's a lot of shit. So um, really like the, what I've been trying to encourage people to do is, I guess, uh, um, adopt you know minimalism and frugalism um if you if you uh i guess uh, live on less you don't have to work as much so that leaves more time for what you want to do um so that's kind of what i focus on is trying to get people that first step out of the survival society and then once uh once they get there and they they start to decompress and think and as i've had the time to do this past year um you know it, it takes you to, to a lot of good places so um that's uh i guess uh kind of a, a little bit of a, an introduction there and um i guess uh now let's 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 talk a little bit about uh, I guess you since uh, yeah you're here um, but uh, I guess t could you t begin by telling us a little bit about uh, your journey uh, how did you come to the peaceful philosophy of anarchism and I guess uh, get to you know this the steps uh, beyond this beyond it yeah um, well like most people um, I feel I suffered a lot 
and um, I was completely entranced by the Matrix. And um, I, I mean, for me personally, I've always been pretty sensitive. I've always been a very empathic individual. And um, but I didn't know where to go with that. And I was always told that you know it, that's wrong. You shouldn't feel so sensitive. You got to be a man. You got to be you know aggressive and dominating and you know um, ruthless, basically. You know, kill or be killed. Right. Survival mm -hmm. of the fittest. And so I was kind of in that program, but I knew it was bunk. Like I knew it was wrong um, essentially my whole life. So what did I do? I used drugs. I used a lot of drugs to cope with um, the robotic automaton society that we're surrounded with. And um, and that that seemed to like, you know, help. Right. Help me to kind of conform mm -hmm. and, you know, pay the taxes and go to the job that sucks and you know, whatever, right. Have the family, you know, whatever. And, um, eventually those drugs led me to, um, tons of falls and, um, to the point where my last, uh, rehab center, I, I knew I was facing death. I knew if I left that rehab center and I went out and used again, I would die. And it was just to that point, it was just so bad. And, um, I had been exposed to people like Mark Passio and, um, just a couple people like spiritual things and stuff like that um in my past prior to this rehab facility that have kind of planted seeds within me and i knew honestly i knew what i needed to do to take my life back right to to evolve and to grow and to hone in on my uh, my essence my spiritual essence and i decided to do that i was like fuck this um so i had to get honest with myself you know my whole life i was basically you know not my whole life but most of my teenage adult adult years, I wasn't necessarily a very you know good adult, but um, I was lying a lot. You know, I was, was that's the drug mentality, right? Like you, you're you just you do anything to escape. And um, so I had a, being honest with myself was a big thing in the beginning. Um, being honest with myself and therefore uh, like my family, and then beyond that, you know, the world. And um, and yeah, I I just decided to. I was, I decided that I was tired of suffering so much and I realized that it was just me doing it. I was just creating my suffering and my whole life I was just blaming other people for the suffering that I was enduring mm -hmm. when, so I basically made this conscious decision to take my responsibility back and become a responsible, sovereign human being. And, um, that was like four and a half, four and a half ish years ago that I did that. And, um, and then ever since then, it's just been like off to the races. Like it's like that, that kind of awakening takes place and then there, there's like nothing else i can do besides pursue truth and and live in alignment with you know um truth the best of my ability and um in the moment uh, every moment right so that's kind of my my background I, I just suffered a lot i and my form of suffering was drugs and then um and lying and deception and then i hit my rock bottom and decided to wake up yeah yeah, I got you. I got you. And, and yeah, I mean, my uh, for for the past, I guess it was five years. I I drank a lot up until uh, up until last year. Um, or it was well, no, I guess it wasn't last year. It wasn't twenty twenty. It was twenty nineteen. Um, it was uh, when I I changed my uh changed my way of eating. I'm a type one diabetic, so sugar was sugar was my I guess you could say my drug and my my drug growing up. And uh, yeah, I, mm. uh, I adopted a low carb diet uh, like a year and a half ago, and that was the first major change I made. And that was yeah, off kind of off, off to the races there. Um, but before that, I mean, I'd, I'd been an anarchist, but um, I don't know. I, I kind of uh, I guess stalled out. And so I I, I interviewed uh, I talked I interviewed Cody Wilson and something he talked about. Um, it was like people people kind of stop at anarchism, and there's more to life than just anarchism, right? Um, so I kind of stalled out for a while, um, and really didn't uh, you know go far with it. I was I was still kind of uh, in the survival society, trying to kind of just I felt like I needed to at least like try to do that, even though I knew I knew it was bullshit. I knew I did I knew I didn't knew I shouldn't. So I guess I I, I guess I kind of drank to the way I think about it now is I drank to lower my frequency enough so I could deal with that nonsense, um, and then now that. I, I now I don't need that distraction. Um, I don't need that distraction. Um, I don't even even earlier this year, like in March when this shit hit, I was like, okay, I got to get serious. Like I got to work towards food self sufficiency on the homestead. Um, I have to, um, like, why the fuck am I watching Netflix? Like that's stupid. Um, you know, it's it's founded by Edward Bernays, Edward Edward Bernays's, um, you know, grandson. Like why the f why am I letting this? Why what why it's a propaganda box? Why am I spending time on it? Why am I playing Xbox? Like this is nonsense. Um, so I kind of just I stopped. 
um, I, I kind of, it, it, it was, it's been, yeah, so it's been a long process for me too. And, um, yeah, it wasn't really, it really wasn't until, um, I mean, uh, I, I watched, uh, your video just before we, uh, just before we started recording on, uh, anarchy, you know, breaking down the word, you know, government being mind control. Well, that's what entertainment is, you know, to enter and con- enter, to enter and control the minds. Um, so, I mean, you don't really have control over your mind until you, stop subjecting yourself to propaganda right um and i know it's 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 kind of a radical radical i guess um perspective but I, i've realized over this past you know year or so that all it takes for the servile society for babylon to pull you in is just one thing so like i'm to the point now where like it's it's uh um i don't know anyway i'm kind of kind of rambling i'll turn it over to you if you have anything so far not really a question there yeah yeah um i can kind of touch on um like the propaganda aspect. I know that when I first ever opened my eyes and started to, you know, take my life back for lack of better terms, um, I, I had to withdraw basically from like all technology. I got rid of my phone. I got rid of all of my social media accounts. I, I kind of, I really did. I withdrawed from society and I just read books, you know, constantly yeah. just reading books. And I would watch the, the, um, YouTube once in a while. Cause there's, you know, there's really great stuff on there, but um, I'd make sure that I was really aware of what I was doing there, you know? So, but like, I feel, I felt it necessary or I feel it necessary at times. It's, it's actually very necessary to, un- to see what the system is trying to get away with now. You know, it's, it's like to, to not be entranced by the propaganda anymore because it's only, mm-hmm. it's only like, it only has that effect on you if you're not aware of it. So, you can go on your, you know, for instance, you can go on Netflix and you can watch a TV show and, and be educated. You know, you can you can make that conscious decision. I'm going to learn from this. I'm not going to use it as an escape. I'm not going to use it to distract me. I'm going to I'm going to be aware in the moment with this TV show because it's been recommended to me or, you know, like, for instance, I just watched The Dark Crystal. That was a badass show, dude. Yeah. I mean, it was so it, it was awesome. And that's on that's a that's a Netflix um, show. and It's based off like a movie that um, a guy named Jim Henson made back in like, I don't know, the seventies or eighties or something. But anyways, it does a really good job at depicting basically reality in this like story. And it's like puppets and stuff. I don't know if you've ever heard of this show or movie or not, Mm -mm. but anyway, just to give an example, you know, or like a documentary. Right. Um, So like, but the, the, what I stress is awareness, you know, like you've got to be aware of yourself during those times and you can't lose yourself in it because that's when you get sucked in to the screen that's when you get sucked into the matrix that's when you get sucked into the propaganda and you start putting your energy towards what they want you to create you know they want you to be distracted they want you to be fast asleep not tuning in to what you actually are you know this infinite consciousness or you know infinite whatever you want to call it they don't want you tapping into that that's why they're so we're surrounded by all these lights and all these distractions at all times so but we can use these these tools like we're using this these computers right now for to reach people to help th- to t- help them wake up you know to help th- to shake them awake and like hey and but the thing about it is even if somebody listened to my voice right now through this you know device if they're not aware of like i'm a human being speaking through a device i'm like i'm over here talking you know i'm living mm-hmm. being if they if they can't see that you know if they're not aware of that and they're not aware of themselves as being the same kind of like you know, coming from the same place as me, right? This infinite being, they're not aware of their, their, um, their potential, their, uh, who they are, what they are, right? Then they can be come entranced by the screen. And now I'm just another distraction. It doesn't matter what I'm talking about. I could be talking about the most juiciest natural law, truth, whatever philosophy. It doesn't matter because if you're not, if you can't see, if you're not aware of yourself, that's ultimately what it comes down to. If you're not aware of yourself, if you don't know yourself, you know, what good is the screen? I mean, the the, the best thing, um, the best case scenario in this situation when somebody does not have the awareness is the seeds are being planted, right? So, you know, so that's best case scenario. At least you're listening to somebody that's try, like r- truly attempting to educate your ass on how reality works and who you are instead of like watching, you know, I don't know, whatever, the mask singer. I don't know what the hell they're, the news, CNN, you know, at least you're not watching that junk. Right. So it's, it's all about how we use it. Right. It's all about our, our, our level of awareness. Right. Right. 
Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. And that's, that was, um, I, I, I got really lucky, I guess you could say. Like, I, I so I, I, I mentioned, like, I've been in Anarchist for four or five years, and I've been solu solutions focused. Um, so I hadn't really gotten bogged down into in conspiracies too much for, for some time. And, um, it, but, but this year, or I guess, you know, last year, 2020, that changed. Um, uh, when March, I, yeah, that, things i i i thought i had i had to get a lot of education really quickly as a lot of people did i think um so i i, I listened to uh, bill cooper's mystery of babylon like three times that's where i started was you know deep and deep in the deep back in uh <laughs> back in secret society land so i was i was going deep into it and, and i luckily stumbled across um uh and and i still and i still think some of that's like some of that's important but more more in more in the realm of like um like there's like uh, i've i've discovered that there's some sects of like cross crucianism and freemasonry that actually are really hardcore in natural law um like the uh, like the Essenes, for example and the gnostics and, and some of those and the, the cathards some of those other other sorts of sorts of things but um anyway and i just lost my uh um where i was talking about um Going through going through the conspiracy this year, but then then I came across uh, Matt's uh, Matt's channel from Quantum of Conscience, and I was like, oh my gosh, like this is what I like I like I I'd been I I couldn't I I'd been seeing things, but I couldn't put them into words. Like I I hadn't come across anyone that put things in, into terms like he had, like describing reality the way that he or I guess the unreality the way that he describes it. Um, so thankfully I found I found uh, I found his um, his channel, um, but I guess. Yeah, I found his channel, and I, I and I and I really fo I really started to focus on it as you're just talking about with, with the awareness. Um, and I've been I guess I've been honing in on that from because um, you you can get uh, I, I and I realized I guess um, I guess it was more just kind of my nature. I was really high strung and kind of anxious to begin with. So then when I'd hear a lot of that fear mongering sort of conspiracy stuff, that didn't help anything. Um, so I've I've been a lot of, like I I pulled pulled back a lot from from that sort of from that sort of stuff and. Um, which is, I guess, good. But uh, now, now I've gone, I've come back into it um, from more of a rational, logical, sort of non-emotional perspective, and it's a lot easier. And, and plus, things are so absurd now. Um, I've, I've almost uh, like it's, it's, it's not the best way to look at it, I guess. But like, things are so absurd that like I can't help it, like I can't help but just laugh at it. Like it would be a joke if like it wasn't, you know, such a bad situation, right? Like it's really, really absurd. Like what's going on in the world? Um, like it's, 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 it's very absurd. So, um, yeah, kind yeah. of, uh, kind of rambling. But I'll turn it over to you. That's all right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, uh, spontaneity is, you know, I, I love the idea of like getting on a podcast or like talking to somebody over like something like this where most people are like being – it's like an interview and it's like this official thing. And I, I, I like that. I mean I appreciate that. I do. But I also appreciate like just hopping on and having a conversation, mm -hmm. you know. I mean how many awesome ass conversations are we having these days? I think a lot of people are, if you know, doing this work and stuff. A lot of people are doing like interview style things, or like you know, they're here and they're, you know, it's like the structured thing. And it's like, I think we need more spontaneity. We need to mix it up more. We need to be more, you know, hey, what's up with you? How are you doing? What you been, go what's been going on? You know, like asking kind of the more human questions, right? Uh, but nonetheless, I mean, on the other side of the coin, it's also equally as important to get into these topics in a structured manner because, quite frankly, people like structure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I resonate with uh, what you're saying. And um, when you say Babylon, I'm not familiar with the term Babylon. Um, like, so can you can you explain that a little bit to me? Um, yeah. So um, I guess really the the way that I use it, um, I guess it's I guess it's it comes from from Christianity. But um, I guess it's uh, um, kind of uh, um, the the tower. I guess uh, it was. <clears throat> ancient egypt i guess you could say ancient egypt and then ancient rome um it's kind of the satanic civilization that's i guess that's now that's now just come to come to america and all the symbolism that's i guess that's that's been that's been co-opted with it so to speak that's that's been kind of mm. associated with it um so yeah gotcha. that's that's really yeah it's just uh um uh, i guess the the evil empire i guess is just uh i, I guess it's just a yeah, just a word just a, a term <laughs> But uh, a term, a term to kind of describe the matrix, essentially, or like the yeah. control system, like the the fake reality that's been that's been laid over our rea our reality, the, the true reality. Yep. If you yep. Will. Yep. Precisely. Yep. The that's right. that's co-opted. The I guess that's co-opted nature. That's co-opted. Um, yeah, that's co-opted nature, which um, I guess a lot of people would would make would co would uh, would synonymize with God. So, um, yeah. Mm, gotcha. Okay. Yep. Indeed. Indeed.
So um, I guess so something else that goes along with this, and, and, and this is a, like, like, we've, like we've been talking about, this, a lot of these are new, new subjects for me, and um, something I've been, fami I've been familiar with, Bill Cooper talked about it, um, but like the, the New Age religion that's, that's been coming up, that's uh, the, the New Age religion, and, and, like, and there's a lot of really valuable spiritual stuff, but then there's a lot of nonsense too. Um, and it's a, lot, a lot of times it's really hard to tell the difference between, uh, between the two. So I guess um, since... Uh, I mean, yeah, you've, you've, you've been looking into these things. Like, could you tell us a little, a little bit about uh, um, your tactics and, I guess, looking into, looking into these subjects and, I guess, distinguishing real valuable spiritual knowledge with, uh, with the, I guess, the uh, New Age nonsense or maybe even, the, maybe even kind of the New Age spirituality that um, drives your energy towards things that you don't want to, like the coercive system? I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, the biggest, I think the biggest thing about the New Age community, the New Age religion, is um, the, the biggest toxic uh, uh, aspect of it is the aspect of, like, just accept everything. Everything is going to play out exactly how it needs to. And um, and so, like, there's this huge energy of inaction in that, you know? There's this huge just, like, just lay down and just let things happen to you type deal, right? So that's like the big one of the biggest problems. Uh, there's a slew of them, but that that's one of the biggest problems that I've faced personally in my um, own involvement in the New Age community when I first ever opened my eyes. And it has this kind of way of like, I think mo I think most people after they've like had their awakening, um, they f they are naturally gra they naturally gravitate to New Age movement. You know, mm -hmm. they naturally gravitate to authors like Eckhart Tolle, Deepak Chopra, Osho. You know, um, whoever else, right? Uh, Don Miguel Ruiz, the the author of the Four Agreements, and you know, in in those books and in those teachings, incredible, like gems, just gems on every page, basically. I mean, it's a it's incredible. It taught me so much about reality. Yeah. But all it takes is like a one percent, two percent lie, right? A one or two percent deception in the book by saying, you know, for instance, like, what's the point of um, taking action in your life? What's the point of getting uh, angry over what the government's doing? You know, what's the point? And that, that's where they get you. That's where they get most people. And so that's where I have a huge issue. And I take, and most people that can see it have a huge issue with the New Age movement because um, it's another trap. It's another uh, mind trap, a mind prison to keep you from connecting with God or with what your higher self or with, with who you are beyond the flesh, right? So um, so to navigate through uh, New Age bullshit, if you want to call it that, you know, mm -hmm. as Mark Pasio calls it, uh, it, it's, it takes awareness. You know, so I, I, come, I always come back to awareness. I always come back to awareness of your thoughts, your behaviors, how you, um, how you act, um, the, the th the, your, uh, uh, your habits, you know, just your whole life, your whole being. Because if you're aware of yourself – then you're starting to develop your discernment. Then you're starting to develop your your intuition, your inner knowing, right? Your inner uh, navigation system that is uh, constantly poking at us to get us to listen. But most people are like left brain or they're completely right brain to where they they just accept everything. They lay down. They're naive. You know, they're extremely religious. You know, they just give their whole life over to this this false entity and so uh, basically government, right? Basically authority, and um. And, and so we have to have balance. We have to have balance. And so, um, when it comes to the new age movement, when you're, when, or a, a author or somebody who is deemed new agey, we have to have discernment. We have to be able to have skepticism, but also realize that there's possibility for deception in this. And so we have to be aware of the, the teachings that we're absorbing. We have to be aware of the the tools and the kind of you know the way they speak and all of it comes into play. So it, it comes down to awareness, discernment, and having that level of skepticism of like I'm not going to be pulled into something that goes against um, what I feel deep deep inside. You know, like mm -hmm. if I know beyond any anything in the universe that I need to take action and I'm here to do something about this mess. I'm here to do something about the slave system. I'm here to take action in my life. I'm not going to listen to some guy tell me that taking action is futile. You know? No, it's not futile. Are you serious? You're trying to deceive people. And maybe maybe he's not trying to deceive people. Maybe that's just where the hell, the hell they're, they're at. You know? Mm -hmm. But 
quite frankly, I feel like a lot of the new age gurus that came overseas whenever they came overseas to start teaching this stuff, I feel like a lot of them were were basically like um, they were uh, uh, compromised. You know, they were compromised and they were feeding a system. They were feeding into what the system wanted um, them to do because uh, like the control system, the dark occult, whatever you want to call them, they have the tendency to understand things. They know what the hell is going on. They understand they, 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 they're master astrologers, they're master psych, uh, psychologists. They understand the energy of what's taking place here. So if they know a, a awakening is a, a potential in humanity, they're going to go along with it. You know, mm-hmm. they're going to play the game. They're going to hijack people. They're going to they're going to you know take people from underground you know bases or whatever. And I, I don't know, I don't know. They're they're just going to go along with it. So they so they stay trapped in this mind prison that says I'm spiritual. I got it figured out. Oh, I know what's going on now. And that's like the most deceptive of them all, you know, because you think mm-hmm. you're this like you, you you know conceptually that you're an infinite being, right? Or you're that you have this infinite power or whatever. Um, but you're connected to God, you know, and you're connected to all things. You but you only know it conceptually. You only know it through words. You only know it through um uh this like this like separate force. You're not genuinely connected to it. Because if you were, then you would, you would, you would know that um, the answer isn't to just, just sit back and just take it. The answer isn't to just um, uh, uh, allow yourself to be a pawn and to feed a slave system and to feed a government, and feed the government. Because you're like, oh, it's just government's happening for a reason. Yeah, the government is happening for a reason because we're we are manifesting it collectively in our realities. You know, that's why it's happening. So. What are you going to do about it? And again, the New Age community is going to say nothing. I'm just going to do yoga all day, you know. <laughs> and again, there's nothing wrong with yoga. There's nothing wrong with meditating. It's incredible tools that I I personally use. Every, uh, not every day, but uh, most a lot of the days I I live, I use those tools. Yeah. But that's it. They're tools. They're not escapes. They're not they're not um, these numbing agents to get us to tap into this overly right brain dynamic where we're not doing anything with our lives. We're just, you know, these airy fairy individuals who don't have that fire anymore. You know, we've allowed mm-hmm. our fire to be quelled. So I think, that, did that answer your question yeah. a little bit? I kind of, yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. 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 And uh, I, I guess it, it, it brought to mind um, something Bill Cooper talked about again. Um, there was a, um, a uh, there's a religion called Baha'ism and um, did a did an episode on, on the on the podcast here. Uh, I guess it had been a few months ago um, on ancient second realms. And basically, ancient second and the idea of a second realm um, is just to bu- basically bu- building a parallel society, um, building a parallel society with parallel, um, you know, um, parallel infrastructure um, to where we don't need we don't need the survival society anymore. It's basically building alternative alternative economies and such. Um, but uh, I I'd, I'd come across a document. Um, Again, I, I mentioned the uh, the Roscoe. Uh, the book is called "The Son of God: The Mystical Teachings of the Masters," and um, I'd, I'd come across. Um, I, I guess the the way that the way that it's pitched is that Jesus and John the Baptist and all these other and uh, you know basically all the all the great teachers are you know they're they're just teachers that came you know through time. Um, they're teaching like it's it's unifies the religions basically. Um, well, anyway, um, you know very very valuable stuff. Uh, very valuable stuff there. Um, but like with uh, with Baha'ism. Um, they, they, it's the same, like they, they, they kind of pitch it the same way. Like it's, it's cut, they try to unify everything. And then, um, I actually went to one of their temples. There's like seven temples, um, in the world. There's one outside of Chicago. I went, uh, when I was up there in Chicago and, uh, it was this massive place. They had, all, you know, obviously it was this old, very old building with all the symbols, it had Nazi symbol everywhere, but obviously the Nazi symbol, it, you know, it meant something for, you know, before then, um, at this, some, some cultural symbol for peace, for peace, I think. Um, but anyway, like it's this really, really nice place, really nice for religion it seems and then like in their brochure they just nicely toss in like they advocate for a one world government um so like <clears throat> there's um like there's I, there's just there's always um and this is something i've, I've something that's i, I guess I've, be, I've become hyper aware of um over the past years that like there's so many deceptions out there um like there's so many deceptions that if you aren't constantly on guard um and wondering how the information you're consuming isn't um how it couldn't be used to, um, you know, put your energy into a system of coercion that you disagree with or that you don't that you don't want to exist or um, that's 
<clears throat> like that's not like that's if you aren't hyper if you aren't hyper aware of that i mean you, you can get sucked in sucked in quite, uh, quite easily so um into into some bad things so um i guess um yeah, just just something something I came across was the Bahaism. Um, if you if you've never looked into it, I, I, I guess it, it might not might not be as popular as they as they uh, as I thought it would be. Um, but uh, that was uh, I guess maybe it was part of the plan according to Bill Cooper. Uh, maybe that was one thing he was wrong about. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I I know somebody um, that I met through Discord that was like I mean, dude, he was so into that. He was so into Baha Bahaism or whatever, and he was sending me links all. The, he was sending me links all the time. He was like, "Dude, this is the end all be all. This is God. This is it. This is the answer." He was so convinced, and it was it was scary. And he was kind of trying to convert everybody to it. And um, I read. I mean, I read. He sent me some articles and stuff, and I read it. And you know, it's it sounds good, right? Like some yeah. of it sounds good, and it, it tries to get you, right? But again, you have to tap into that discernment. It's like mm-hmm. it's like, how do I feel really about this beyond that? that kind of like that shiny box, you know, I got to peer through that and have that x-ray vision. Right. So yeah. that, that had, you know, that goes into intuition that goes into how, how does your, how do you feel in your guts? You know, how's your guts feel? Because my guts feel nauseous after this guy trying to convert me and shove all this information down my throat. That tells me enough right there. You know, that tells me enough right there. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I guess that's, that, that brings to mind, um, the uh in, in regards to the symbols um i watched uh this is actually the first video i watched of yours um but uh you uh, was yeah the last the last video that you did i would, I would definitely recommend i'll drop uh, links to uh your channel um in uh, in the show notes definitely recommend uh um, everyone go check it out um but yeah your your la- uh, the last video you talked about um uh, i guess uh, the the co- i guess the uh, co-opting and fearmonger this this of symbols specifically the uh um the dual snakes which um is a i guess a, a is i guess a symbol of of dna um and you you talked about i guess the significance of dna in that and i guess um if if you could just i guess briefly just provide a, a little little summary of it, it was a book review that you that you did um a little summary on that and then we can we can talk a little bit about i guess your thoughts thoughts on um i guess the the corrupt the, the corrupting of symbols um we'll, we'll kind of start there yeah sure um so i want to start by saying i'm not an expert in this field at all um i just kind of i read this book and i thought it was fascinating and i'm like wow and i started making a couple connections and i just kind of made a video you know off of web and, <laughs> and i felt it necessary um yeah, that's what i do <laughs> but one second <clears throat> right and so um when it comes to the twin stake symbolism, yeah, I, I I feel deep down that that it has a connection to um, DNA, and so that it just started making perfect sense to me that they would invert such a symbol, and it it, it started bringing back memories of my childhood when I was watching these Disney films and like Hercules and you know, a few other films and 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 the movies and like Anaconda and things like that, and I'm like, wow, like the snake is. And just how I feel about snakes already, like, why is this, I mean, I got over this irrational fear of, like, spiders and sharks and snakes mm-hmm. when I first, like, woke up. But um, it's funny, they they're all start with S. It's kind of funny. But um, uh, I don't know what that means, but I'm just, I just, <laughs> I just noticed it. All right, but, um, but yeah, like, I, I, I it, it, most people have this irrational fear of snakes. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I was like, wait. Is that because the system wants them to fear their own inherent power? That would make perfect sense. Just get people to fear what makes them, you know, like, like, just get the people to fear this mass reservoir of all the knowledge of the birth from the birth of the cosmos. Yeah, get them to fear that so they never tap into it. And it's like this subconscious program, mm-hmm. you know. And um, I'm gonna make a few other videos on this topic because, like. You know, now I'm reading this book called Hermes Unveiled, and it's a very rare book. And I, I obviously, I, I attra- attracted it into my life. I mean, it fell on my lap. Um, but it's a very rare book, and it's talking about snake symbolism. It's talking about symbolism in all these different sects: the Bible, Rosicrucianism, uh, her- and Hermeticism. Big Hermeticism. Um, it's talking about like Hermeticism is Hermeticism is like behind all the um, the religions. Like it's it, there's there's Bits of hermeticism and everything it says, basically, mm-hmm. which is interesting. But again, I'm not a master expert or whatever in this subject. This is very new to me. Um, so, but it's talking about the snake and how the snake represents um, essentially. It's another way to look at it. It represents the conscious mind. 
And that would make sense because look at the Ouroboros, the symbol of the Ouroboros, the snake eating its tail, constantly going in circles. Because what does the mind do? The conscious mind is constantly just thinking, 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 thinking all the time, all the time. Thoughts, 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 until you become aware of the thoughts and you start to learn how to, quote unquote, still the mind, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, like, and this has to do with, like, initiation and things. I'm not going to go too much off topic here, but um, basically, like – the slaying of the snake or the slaying of the dragon when you see those myths uh they there's one way to look at it is you're slaying the conscious mind you're slaying kind of the um the endless slews of thoughts that are tr constantly trying to take you out of the moment you know yeah. you're, you're slaying the the aspect of it that's just unruly it just keeps going it's just non-stop you know and we can all relate to that so how to slay it is the, the sword or the fire, right? The sword mm -hmm. is the the awareness. It's the it's the observation of the thought and not feeding the thought. Now I'm 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 uh, now just watching the thoughts and I choose to feed what thoughts I want to create in the world. You know the things that I want to create in the world. I feed my thoughts based off that, right? So that's now you're starting to take over the mind. Now you're starting to become a master mind. You know, yeah. and that's when you step into the realm of the initiate. If you you want to take it back to ancient days, that's what they you know that's what they call them. Somebody that's initiate is somebody that is starting to cleanse their psyche of impurities, of uh, basically saying you're no, no longer feeding thoughts of destruction and chaos and just just thoughts that aren't serving you and aren't serving existence itself. You know, they're not serving. A balance and freedom and love and oh you know whatever like all the things that we say we want so so the snake symbolism has a, uh, a lot of different meanings a lot of different takes and and that and i'm coming to understand recently so but the twin snakes yes specifically the twin snakes um that for what i from what i understand it might have more meanings than this but um it does represent dna and um, again, it makes perfect sense why they would want in to invert such a powerful yeah. dynamic that is, you know, the reason why, like, the energy behind my my talking right now, mm -hmm. you know, if the reason that I'm coming to any understanding is because I'm just awakening it inside of my own my own cells, you know, in my in my DNA. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, and uh, it, it brings to mind, I'm not sure if you've ever looked into, um, I guess, kind of the uh, the Electric Universe material or um, like the work of uh, Walter Russell and the the, uh, the Universal One, um, but uh, Dr. Barry Lando's talked about um, basically like the DNA being being antennas, um, being, you know, like uh, basically elect electrical antennas. Um, and then um, you've got, you know, like vaccines and fluoride and all of that, um, you know, um, hampers the hampers the, you know, the, that, uh, you know, electrical connection, I guess, is, is kind of the, the way that the way that he puts it. Um, so. So I guess, uh, um, yeah, I, I guess, um, yeah, still, still the same, same sort of idea fearing, you know, fearing what's, you know, f fearing something, um, yeah, something that, that critical. And obviously if they're going, if they're going to, if they're going to try to get people to, as you point out and pointed out in your video, if I recall, um, if they're, if they're going to get people to take, uh, you know, these, uh, um, you know, the, the G DNA modificating, uh, DNA modification, you know, um, I guess these, uh, <laughs> These evil devices and things. I know what you're talking. Then, about. Um, yeah. <laughs> then, then they're going to. Uh, I mean, they're going to need to convince people that you know, like, they aren't. You know, like that they aren't. You know, divine beings, and that that DNA that 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 DNA doesn't matter. And it's 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 also interesting too. Um, I listened to um, a podcast. It was a permaculture podcast, and uh, he was talking about um, like uh, um, like mycelium and mushrooms. Well, mycelium is, I guess, um, and is, is, I guess kind of the like the root structure, the way like the way the jungle like the forest communicates with each other um which i guess would speak to why it could be so powerful as a as a, as a plant medicine um but um he was talking about um oh gosh um i just lost my lost my train of thought but um yeah anyway lost it but so similar similar sort of thing that um i guess maybe in the plant maybe maybe it'll come back to me but <laughs> maybe it'll come back to that me. makes that makes sense just to, just to tap on that is that makes sense you know i guess i, I guess it'd be the dna the, the, the dna of the forest the dna of the earth i guess is kind of kind of maybe, maybe the angle I'm mm. yeah i mean it's all there it's all in nature you know it like it's it, it's so true i mean in my personal experience with uh mushrooms i mean dude those like i've had experiences man where 
um, especially when I'm in like a like a location like for instance I I just traveled to um, Asheville which I I spent a year in Asheville when I first woke up I moved to Black Mountain and I just stayed on the mountain for a year and um, I went I go back there frequently and uh, my partner and I just went to a little tiny like mountain town with very like just country you know it just just barely any houses you're just in the middle of this raw giant fucking mountain you know mm -hmm. and you're on the i was on like kind of close to the top and we got we rented a cabin and uh we brought mushrooms we're like this is the perfect place we got to do it we, i mean and the mushrooms call you you know you, you don't just like seek them out there it might it might manifest that way you know you looking for them but that's just them calling you, you know that it's it's very special and i've been sitting on these mushrooms for a long time um over a year and finally they're like all right I'm ready to speak to you, you know, and yeah. not, not to be too, you know, far out with this, but uh, it, it's really like that. Um, anyways, we get to the mountains, we, we eat the mushrooms and dude, I, I just ended up sitting next to a tree and it was like the subconscious, the, in, the universal mind was just fucking hitting, hammering me with all this knowledge. And I had my notebook and I was just right. Like, oh man, it was incredible. And it was just like, you know, telling me, dude, you know, because, you know, we, we, we face doubt, we face insecurity, we face all these different things, you know, and it's like I took this substance and I, I took these this sacred, you know, medicine and it's telling me you're exactly where you need to be. Um, you know, like you're doing everything that you need to do. And it was telling me all these like it was I don't I can't really explain it. It's hard to explain, but it was just give, it was just kind of like I was taking this download. That's the way that's the best way I can put it. I was taking this this giant energetic download, and I can almost feel my cells. I could feel my cells vibrating. I can feel my body just like, whoa, you know. And and so, um, any anyways, I'm not like condoning. Yeah, like I'm. I, what I'm what I'm saying is, it's a very very powerful um, yeah. psychedelic drugs in in general are extremely uh, the right ones are extremely powerful tools that we can use to connect. With what we are to connect with the universal mind, God, uh, infinite consciousness, whatever you want to call it, if used properly in the proper setting, not used to escape, not used um, through, not not abusing it because abusing it's gonna, it's just gonna show your ass. And you're gonna have a terrible experience, yeah. you know. So when used properly, it's 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 gold. And and again, it's not necessary. It's it's absolutely not necessary. And I said this in my video. Um, it's not necessary to use psychedelic drugs to freaking connect with God. You, I mean, that's what you are. You shouldn't need some type of chemical or some type of substance to connect with what you are. Mm -hmm. But I find that many people that I've talked to and many people along this journey, along the path of truth discovery, do find themselves face to face with a psychedelic drug. You know, and it's not a coincidence, right? It's not a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. And uh, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I've, I've thought about this a number of times, but I never thought like I, I was, I was, pro I was a pretty rigid atheist until like two or three years ago. Probably actually, yeah, probably until like two years ago. Um, so like I, I never would have um like imagined, um, going down this path. Like, it's, but like the, the, the conspiracy. Like I, I'm, I'm thankful for the conspiracy path though, because um, like the I've, and I've heard other people talk about this too. But conspiracy eventually is a spirituality because you realize that this shit can't be real. Um, <laughs> like people are right. Like you can't keep like as Matt from you know quantum conscious uh, quantum conscious talked about. Like you can't keep all these people quiet. Like something is like there. There's more to this than like this doesn't. There's the, n none of this makes a whole lot of sense. So, um, I guess um, yeah. <laughs> I know you're yeah. Have you listened to his book yet? Um, I've listened to I uh, chapters pop up and I I watch them when, when I I watch them. Um, I've I've watched a number of them. I haven't watched all of them though. It's a long book. It was like sixty okay. something chapters. Oh yeah, it's it's like seventy, probably like eighty something now. But yeah, yeah. I've I've probably uh, watched that, a quarter of it. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so juicy, dude. So yeah. juicy. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. So I was saying, I was, I was thankful for the conspiracy. Like it got me to the spirituality thing. Um, and then, yeah, like the, I, I don't know, like, uh, I, I, <clears throat> yeah, it's, 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 it's been interesting for sure. Um, it's, it's been interesting. And, and, um, 
I don't know. I don't really have any anything else on on, on that note. Well, I guess th- there was one other thing on the on the symbolism thing. Um, so I mentioned the work of Walter Russell. Like the so he he's uh he's done a he has a, a book called The Universal One that he wrote. So I guess he he had like a thirty day. Um, he went into like a thirty day. Um, I guess com- uh, commune with the divine is what he called it, and he just like basically just took down all this information. He was an artist, and he it was a book kind of I guess merging spirituality and and science called the the Universal One. But uh, in the uh, 1950s, he um, developed a prototype for um, a free energy device. And at their 52, you know, room university, um, he, they uh, demoed it for a month straight. Um, and, it, you know, it worked. Um, and uh, then he gave it to the government and, you know, what happened to it. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, anyway, uh, I was talking about Walter Russell. I um, don't know where I was. Um, oh yeah, so the uh, um, so the, the free energy thing. Well, apparently there's uh, sy- like symbolism like with free energy. Like if you look at a lot of the old cathedrals, and um, I, I guess uh, and this this gets into another rabbit hole that I have not never, never opened up um, on this podcast before. But fuck it, whatever. Um, like the like a uh, and and I guess uh, there's there's other ones too. Like a like a you know like there there's um, like apparently the cross is a symbol for, uh, for free energy, like for, uh, potentially for free energy. And it's like in, in terms of symbol, like symbols being inverted, or I guess symbols being, um, associated with other things. Well, instead of being, you know, associated with like something liberating, like free energy, like which Walter Russell prototype, which, which works, the designs are out there, um, folks. And, um, I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> um, now it's a symbol of death, right? Like the, the cross is associated with, with death. Um, and which is not positive. Um, it's not positive. It's and everything, everything in the society is associated with death. Um, really you've got war, like it's, 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 uh, um, yes, it's not good. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah, symbolism has been inverted for sure. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So, um, let me see if, uh, if there's any, anything else, um, any other symbols I wanted to, any other symbols I mentioned? I don't think so. Um, yeah, like like I said, I'm still very much learning about symbolism. Like I've I've always been very attracted to symbolism. You know, I've always been very um, drawn to symbolism. I mean, I think most people are. That's why they mm-hmm. use the symbols for every you know to hypnotize people. But I'm I'm currently all these books have just recent recently found me. All this knowledge mm-hmm. has just recently found me on this topic. So I'm going to be making um, I'm going to be making quite a bit of videos. I, I feel about this about yeah. this topic like this book i'm reading right now is talking about like all these different like stories like um the ugly duckling cinderella all these stories come from like this our ancient past to, mm-hmm. to help us like in parable style like metaphorically yep. help us to connect to what we are it, it's it's mind-boggling yep. i they, can't even they, 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 begin they, to they trans- even they've transcended time for a reason like they're not just silly stories um yeah, exactly they're, 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 that's why they invert that's why you disney's you know, taking it all and fucking making it its own thing. You know, it's like yeah, and that's 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 so. uh, yeah. And I sent uh, I was I talked to I was talking to a colleague of mine, Jason Paris, about this too. But yeah, like like growing up, and I, I guess we're probably close to close to about the same age. But yeah, like the Disney movies, like I was bathed in that symbolism growing up. Like it was everywhere. Um, so like I, I I can't even imagine all the subconscious shit that was in my head with those sim- with, with with those symbols. And it's just it's so pervasive now. Like. Um, you, you can't escape it. Like you can't escape that symbolism. Um, mm-hmm. so like I, what's your, what, what's your age? Uh, 28, 28. Okay. You have 29. So okay. we're right there. Yep. Yep. I figured so. Um, so I, so I guess you, you can, you can verify that too, that you, you grew up probably bathed in that symbolism as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I was so into, you know, Aladdin and Hercules and, um, you know, all the, all the little mermaid. I watched all of them. Yeah. Yeah. And just and beyond that too, you know, all the, the cartoons, the shows, the like, all the things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, yeah, certainly fascinating. Certainly, fa- certainly fascinating. It's kind of the, the the last point that I, I guess the, the last general point that it leads to this that I, that I want to talk about is which we've we've kind of been alluding to is that yeah, in the, in the slave society, all truth is inverted, and um. It's yeah, all truth is inverted and all knowledge is connected. Uh, there's another YouTuber I've, I've, I found, another content creator I found, thanks to Matt from Quantum of Conscience, uh, called Event, and she's she put out this video that was super fun. I probably watched it a dozen times called There Is One Knowledge, and she mm-hmm. she talked about um, because Bill Cooper back in those days he talked about the body of Osiris all time and time again. You know the lost phallus of Osiris. Well, she she 
she pulled all the connections together um in that um like the the body of osiris is a body of knowledge um and it's been divided across you know it's been divided across the world and you know we've got to remember you know remember we've got to remember the body um gather up all of these pieces this is why when you look at ayurveda you know like you you look at all these various cultures they're the same stories repeated over and over again and um that's it's the it's the same sort of i mean you've got to have a chance to get out of here like whatever however people you know think about you know um you know i guess reincarnation or whatever if you if or the you know the reincarnation wheel or whatever theories people have on that um you know there's you know there's i don't know anyway um <laughs> yes yeah, so I don't know if you've got anything there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't really actually tapped into Levette's uh, stuff. I've, it's been recommended, obviously, a lot, yeah. but I haven't yet um, it's deep. stuff out. But It's really deep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I From what I've heard, yeah, I, I've uh, it is pretty deep. Um, but, yeah, uh, yeah totally. Um, knowledge is connected to everything else. And, and, and as soon as you start going down that path of like – not only absorbing knowledge, because if you want to talk about knowledge real quick, knowledge is information. And um, it's in, and a lot of people have a lot of knowledge intellectually, you know, a lot of people have a lot of knowledge, they understand a lot of concepts, but they don't live like they don't live it, they don't apply it to their lives, you know, because applied what wisdom is, is applied knowledge. Mm -hmm. So when you start going down that path of uh, truth discovery what what i'll say is I, I from what i feel it's hard it's kind of hard for me to describe knowledge kind of you know um define knowledge if you will mm -hmm. but to me i feel like knowledge is knowing right knowledge is like is it's it's beyond itself it's pointing to truth beyond itself so and you can only find that truth you can only discover that truth when you go past the knowledge when you go past the information when you go past the the concept or the word that's, you know, like the word truth isn't truth. What's beyond it is it's what it's what lies beyond it is that's truth. But you can't talk about it. You can't. I mean, you can point to it, you know, with words, with paintings, with art, with videos, with, with podcasts, whatever, with books. Mm -hmm. You can point to it all day, but it's it's your responsibility to align yourself with it and not be hypnotized by vocabulary, by by definitions, by words, right, by symbols. Yeah. Symbols just point to something. What are they pointing to? Knowledge is just pointing to something. What is it pointing to? And as soon as you start pursuing that path and you start taking in knowledge, absorbing it, applying it, and then kind of removing the um, the words and stuff, right? Then you start to realize that, yes, knowledge is all connected to it, – mm -hmm. it's all one, one thing, you know? It's just truth. It's just – like it, it's, it's just a reminder, right? It's just this big, gigantic reminder of who you are and what's taking place on this planet and quite frankly how to resolve the problems on the planet how to alleviate the suffering taking place or better yet how to suffer in general you know how like learning how to suffer i think that's a big uh big big thing that a lot of people don't talk about enough and i need to talk about uh more because i feel like a lot of people want to just alleviate their suffering they don't, they don't want they want to get rid of their suffering you know and that's a big new age deception in and of itself too don't suffer. You don't have to suffer. You know, suffering's evil. Suffering's bad. Like, and that's like very, you know, fake ass Buddhist type thinking, you know, not real Buddhism, but like fake kind of fake false pseudo Buddhism where it's like end all suffering, get rid of all of your stuff. Just, just kind of, you know, like don't, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. meditate all day, whatever. But, um, uh, but yeah, so the the I forgot where I was I was uh, I was at there. <laughs> when it comes to talking about Buddhism, and um, but before then, yeah, I lost it. Anyways, yes, all knowledge is Almost, connected, yeah. and uh, we have to live in a we have to live in alignment with um, with that knowledge in the sense of we have to apply the knowledge to to understand that it works. Not just intellectual, intellectually grasp it, because what does it mean then? You know that knowledge is essentially meaningless once you you're just intellectually grasping it. So you're just regurgitating things that sound good. You know mm -hmm. they might resonate somewhere within your soul. You know, but like you're not you're not applying it to your life. You don't live it. I could talk about you know governments, slavery, and you know authority and uh, natural law and all those things all day. I could talk about them all day. 
But if I'm still giving my energy over to a slave system, if I'm still giving my energy over to government, if I'm still giving my energy over to things that that in our opposition with natural law, right? Mm-hmm. I'm a hypocrite. I'm not actually living the things that I'm talking about, you know. And I'm probably just trying to get something out of it. I'm trying to get like you know, I, I'm talking about egoically. Like I want to get attention. I want money. I want status. I want you know, whatever it is, followers. Yeah, it's like no, it's not about that at all. And the individuals who are applying knowledge to their lives to see if it actually works or not. Those are the people that aren't going to care about those types of things. They're going to, all they're going to care about is truth. All they're going to care about is, is, is balance, you know, in, 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 in holistic living, if you will, in the, on the planet. So, right. And, and when, and when you alter your motives. Right. And, and when, when you begin to, I guess, understand, like, I guess the, the perfection of nature, like I, I've been getting into things like spagyrics and, and alchemy and I guess potentially making uh, plant medicines here, um, here, here at, uh, here at Pasnia. Um, like there's so much, like there's so many, like, and, and then just the general permaculture and homesteading thing. Like once you, once you, um, I guess, uh, I guess maybe get in, uh, maybe get get in tune with nature. Um, and like, uh, I, I, I've been telling people before, like, uh, I, I get up early, I get up super early now. I'm like 4am and I, I'd never, like, I've usually wouldn't have been up that early. So like, I'd, I'd go outside and I'd see like, I'd, I went outside one morning and I saw it was a new moon. So the moon was like, it was, you know, it was, it was dark and it was just right there. Like, I thought it was a fucking spaceship. It was so close. Like it was right there, man. But I, I like, and it's, and I, like, I thought that was a really significant thing, but I, every single month that happened, but I just never noticed it before. Um, <laughs> so like, there's like once, mm. once, once people un, un, unattach themselves and attach their attention from, yeah, the, the matrix or the or Babylon or the survival society, whatever, whatever, whatever people want to call it. Um, I mean, there's, um, like it's, it, and, and put yeah putting your energy into into nature i mean it's um there's yeah there's certainly i guess um i don't know it's it's pretty incredible it's pretty incredible to say the least absolutely yeah yeah i mean i've learned i've learned so much through just ob- observing cats observing nature observing uh bugs and you know like it, spiders and tree it's just like being with that energy you know it, it, mm-hmm. it you learn so much but the thing about it is the ego can't the ego can't grasp that the ego can't um understand the value of that it it needs to know everything it needs objectifications it needs the past and future really to exist i mean it's like this it's ego is this vessel that we that we speak through you know that truth can be be channeled through or is channeled through if if you allow it to be Mm -hmm. or it can be our greatest hindrance to where we're just identifying with form and we're 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 caught in that that web that illusion of physicality of um you're separate from me, you know? And yes, there is, there is, it is that, you know, like you're over there talking to me. You're, you are in a sense separate from me, but in ultimate reality, you're not. So we have to, we have to hold both of those, you know, we can't just be like, everything's connected and that's the only place I live. And we can't be in the everything separate. And that's the only place I live. We have to understand that this reality is a paradox. So we have to live in both realms at the same time. That's where the ego is like, what the fuck? Because the ego needs surety. It needs to know things. It needs to know yep. that everything's going to be figured out because it's, it's after for, it's for, it's like survival. It's like, it's like, I need to know what, what's go- going on. I need to know answers. I need to know why the universe works. I need to know why I do the things that I do. And that's good. You know, that's, it, that's good, but you have to pursue it in the sense of like, it's okay to not know things. <laughs> and through your, your ignorance, if you are just aware of your ignorance, if you just stop separating yourself from this ignorance of yours, then you can find out what's real. Then your ignorance will wash away. But people don't want to face that. People people want to think they got it figured out. You know, people are trapped in that ego. So um, yeah, like the ego can't find value in things like having a walk in nature because it's always trying to get something out of it. You know, like yeah. oh, I look at these plants and my ego goes, "What kind of plant is that? What kind of bug is that? What kind of this is that? Why is it doing that? Why is it?" And it's like. Why can't you just be with it? Mm-hmm. Then you'll find out the what you know what the purpose is or whatever. If you, if it needs to be revealed to you, can you just live life and not like trying to freaking analyze everything? Because that's yeah. when you step into that again, that overly analytic, uh, skeptic side of you that wants to just objectify everything and separate everything. You know, so we have yeah. to have balance. We have to have balance.
Yep, that's that's a great way to put it, and I'll, I'll point the listeners to. There was uh, it's it was like three years ago, and uh, I, I did an episode on like science. It was uh, uh, Daryl Becker and I did a couple episodes on. Um, I guess uh, the the topic of quantum mechanics came up, and um, if you want to see like a hyper rationalist, obje- like I guess objectivist sort of look, like that was yeah, that was me. Um, that was definitely me. It's like no, it can't be. It's you know law of identity. It's got to be one thing. You know A is A. It cannot be. You know it can't be. It can't be both at once. Um, but uh <laughs> yeah so that that was it's that that's been the hardest the hardest i guess change for me over the past year has been kind of that uh, that thought based reality perspective that 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 change of mindset that um not that uh um i guess that that mind proceeds or i guess consciousness creates reality um that's that's been kind of the uh i guess the the hardest hardest thing to 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 come come to terms with this year but or i guess in the past year but um i don't know the work of walter russell's was has, has helped significantly so I'm not sure if you're, I've, I mentioned him a few times, but, um, yeah, I haven't yeah. looked at any, I just wrote, I wrote his, uh, book down and his name down. So I'll check him out when we're, uh, when I have time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good stuff. It's, it's definitely good stuff. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's all, you know, it's all, it's all, it's all applicable too. It's all applicable. So, um, but uh, and that's yeah that's that that's that's really what I needed like that I needed something to merge those merge those the spiritual and, and kind of that scientific realm because as we're seeing if there's if there's not a balance as you said between between the two then science becomes a religion and uh, then you have 2020 and the results of that <laughs> right yeah or if spirituality is becomes a religion if you're just right all in that you know fra- framework you got to have both mm-hmm. it, 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 it's it's both simu- it's both simultaneously it's both they are one. Ultimately, they are one. Mm-hmm. And, and again, there's that. Yeah, there's that part of you, right? That goes, "What the fuck? What do you mean that they're one? You know, it's like it's either one or the other. Come on. And it's like, well, our reality, the universe, is a paradox. You know, read the Tao Te Ching. Start going into the Eastern traditions, and don't be taken by them because they they can they again they can ta- they can definitely wa- take you away from taking action. They can really hinder your uh, thwart your progress in consciousness if you misread them, if you misinterpret them. But they're extremely valuable if you if you read them with awareness and you keep your discernment and you keep your uh, skeptic hat on, mm-hmm. and you just and you're just with the teachings. You know, they can be of extreme value. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And as I've said so many times on this podcast, um, it, it's in, in, the, in the realm of self liberation. I mean, it's the the theory is the theory is the theory is great, but um, practice is what matters. Like I mean, like it's they both matter. Um, the, the philosophy and the philosophy and practice both matter, and you, you can't have one without the other. So um, same 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 sort Absolutely. of thing. Absolutely. Same sort of thing here. So um, I guess. Um, going for for about an hour here i i i guess um it's been been a, a fantastic fantastic chat um i really really appreciate you coming on I, i'm glad i got to talk to somebody um i've really only talked to I, I talked to my buddy jason paradise about this stuff but he's the only one um especially like th- there was for the past four years there, there was all there was always like a very very wide gap between me and other people that i associate with um but yeah after this year like it's done like <laughs> Like yeah, it's done. So I appreciate you. I appreciate uh, appreciate you you coming on to chat, man. I, I really really do. Yeah, man. I really appreciate you inviting me, and uh, I'll check out your stuff. I haven't really looked into um, your some of your previous stuff, but um, I'll check it out and um, and yeah, I'll navigate through it and, and watch <laughs> some videos and stuff. And again, yeah, I appreciate you inviting me, and it's been really great to kind of get to know you and kind of get to know where you're at and. Um, and quite frankly, I really appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate your, your efforts and your, um, like, I'm not really familiar with some of the things that you're talking about when it comes to like home setting and things like that, but you know, perhaps I need to be, so I'll check out your stuff and yeah, I appreciate you, man. Hey, thanks. I, I appreciate that. And, and before, before I let you go, uh, do you want to tell, I guess, tell the little, tell the listeners uh, a little about, uh, you know, your YouTube channel, if you got a website where they can, they can find your work and follow you. Absolutely. Um, so my YouTube channel is under my name, Lawrence Wasson, and uh, my website is theprincipleofcare.com. And um, the principle of care, quite frankly, is the all-encompassing principle of natural law. The, the natural law is consisted of uh, uh, seven hermetic principles, if you're familiar with that. And the eighth lost principle is the principle of care. And if you don't have care, then what are the other principles? What do they mean? You know, you got to have care to actually care enough to tap into natural law itself, to care enough to want to connect with other people, 
to, to connect to with what you're actually, what you actually are, you know, your purpose, all the things. Mm-hmm. So, um, and, uh, yeah, so that's my website and that's my, my YouTube channel. I talk about a, a wide variety of different topics and I, it's very spontaneous and, um, I like making slideshow presentations and I'll do that every, every few months, release a new slideshow presentation based off what I feel I need to talk about. Um, but again, I talk about, um, anything and everything you can really think of on my YouTube channel. Yeah. And I also, I'm also connected with, um, like BitChute and Brighteon and library, all, all of the, you know, brand new tube, all those platforms as well. So yeah, come check me out. Yeah. Very good. Very good. And, uh, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely, uh, um, put links in the show notes. Definitely go check out, uh, check out his work. And, uh, pro- I, I mean, I, 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 I kind of just wanted to, uh, to just hit record and see what we, see what we came out there with, uh, with this discussion tonight. Um, but it'd be great to have you on. I, I, I kind of, we should have talked about natural law. I could kind of slip my mind. Um, for some reason, I don't know why, but, uh, um, we, you know, should, should have you back on to talk about natural law and, and, uh, and care, um, at some point in the, uh, in the future, if you'd be interested. Absolutely. Yeah. Anytime, man. Just let me know. Right on. Very good. Well, uh, Lawrence, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. And um, for uh, the listeners, thanks for tuning in. Vonniepodcast.com is the website. And uh, until next time, always remember, Vonnie was yours for the making. All right, guys. I uh, <laughs> hope you enjoyed uh, that discussion with uh, Lawrence Wasson uh, from the Principal of Caro. We'll certainly have him back on uh, to chat in uh, in the near future. I uh, just wanted to uh, take a moment here to let you guys know uh, about uh, some new things we have going on over at Libertarian Type Publications. Um, where uh, if you're if you're new here, um, where uh, we uh, we are a solutions uh, solutions focused publisher, um, liberty focused publisher. Um, Goris Anarchist Fiction, um, Self Liberation Bundles, all sorts of uh, really cool liberty based content, solutions based content. Um, but um, yeah, I figured I'd take a moment here and uh, tell you, uh, I guess, to just give you an update on a few things we've uh, we've got, a uh, um, few new things we've got out. Uh, just released Ocean Freedom Notes, Ocean Living. Uh, actually, it's been digitizing that over the past uh, week or two. Um, and it is now uh, available on the LUA website. Uh, very, very good publication. Very good publication. Um, so that's uh, the first newest uh, edition, newest release. Um, and we also had uh, the honor of publishing uh, um, the the now late Carl Watner um, from Voluntarist.com, who uh, you know, Kyle and I have talked about him many times on this podcast and in other ones. Um, but uh, we published, uh, we got uh, the opportunity to publish uh, the best of the Voluntarist 2000 2020. Um, so that is available on uh, the LUA website. Uh, and uh, Evil Amazon uh, as well for all of our books. You can find um, links purchased on Amazon um, there in the description. The, of course, it is an affiliate link because uh, we'll double dip if we can. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, and the uh, the other the other one of notes I'll mention is the invention of evil, um, which I yes yeah, certainly I would say goes uh, goes along pretty well with uh, the conversation that Lawrence and I had. Uh, um, just. Uh, so yeah, Invention of Evil, um, How the Matrix Began by Henry E. Jones. Um, yeah, yeah, very interesting. I haven't read the entire thing yet. Um, I still have to do. I still have to um, do the. I guess a, a thorough, thorough proofreading of it. But uh, um, I've I've read uh, a few chapters of it, and it's uh, it's very, very interesting. So um, I uh, would certainly recommend uh, checking that out. Uh, and obviously, the cover design um, came out uh, fantastic. Thanks, Miriam, for that. And the other newest, uh, the other new edition, I'll, I'll just mention the 2020 Liberation Bundle, um, which I, I do have uh, have that in stock. So if uh, you want to uh, can get that shipped out uh, tomorrow, um, Vonnie Life, March 1973, The Big Book of Secret Hiding Places, Low Cost Living Notes, Survival Guarding Notes, and Ocean Freedom Notes. And that's uh, different Ocean Freedom Notes. This is just, uh, <laughs> this is... Uh, the first edition that I published, uh, I, I, I probably put it out for free on the Vonnie Podcast website like two years ago. Um, so this uh, this is the older version, um, not to be confused. It's a different cover. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's our, uh, our 2020 Liberation Bundle. Certainly do recommend that. And let me see if there's anything else uh, of note. Uh, I don't think so. But uh, I'll just uh, point out a couple of things uh, for those who are, are new to the LUA website and I have made some changes. You can find our audiobooks here, product categories, audiobooks, books, bundles, ghost pad, and privacy, privacy tools, which this will be updated um, over the next week or so. Um, I hope over the next couple of weeks. 
Um, I mentioned on one of the podcasts about uh, freedom boxes. Well, um, freedom boxes and, and I guess pirate boxes. So hopefully those will be coming in here soon, uh, and uh, we can really um, begin to provide uh, maximum resiliency to uh, all the nonsense happening in the survival society. But it's nothing new. It's it's stuff we've been preparing for anyway, right? Um, what did we want to be on their platforms anyway? No, fuck them. Um, we're already we're already doing this anyway. So um, business as usual uh, in the second realm. Nothing, nothing new in the survival society as far as we're concerned. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll be there. And then I'll mention just uh, of nope. There's a Pasnia category too. If you want to pick up a Pasnia flag, or if you want to find out more information uh, becoming uh, about becoming an honorary stakeholder, the Republic of Pasnia, Self Liberators Paradise. Just go to pasnia.com, or you can yeah go here and uh, snag a flag if you just want a flag, which I do have one in stock. So. Um, yeah, get on that. <laughs> Only have one, well, one left for right, one left right now, and then it'll probably be a couple months before I have any more in. But, um, yeah. With that said, uh, thanks so much for tuning into this episode of the Vonio Podcast. And uh, if you do decide to go pick something up from uh, Liberty, Liberty Type Publications, I certainly do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, with that said, uh, until next time, see you guys. A brief excerpt from the preface of Dr. Henry Jones's The Invention of Evil, the newest book available from Liberty Under Attack Publications. I set out in life to find out what was harming psychiatric patients. When I entered the psychiatric profession, I was immediately confronted with the reality of insane asylums, involuntary psychiatric hospitalization, electroshock therapy, and powerful and dangerous drugs. Force and coercion engulfed everything in my profession. Before I could begin to study my psychiatric patients, I was confronted with my own beliefs and how they conflicted with the assumptions of my chosen profession. I have based this book on what my patients taught me. I learned that they suffer from a mental injury intentionally inflicted on them when they were children. The purpose of this abuse and betrayal was to swindle them out of their most precious property. The property that is stolen by this widely prevalent scheme is the most valuable property a person can ever own. It is their self. Although millions, possibly billions of people have been victims of this kind of theft, a person's self is not easy to steal. To accomplish such a theft requires a special tool. This tool had to be invented. This tool is evil. I realized that in order to help my patients reclaim their property, I would have to know a lot more about evil and how to successfully combat it. This book is about the insight I gained into how evil wins, enslaves the self, and how this process can be defeated. This book, this hypothesis, is published to fulfill a 70-year-old promise. Dr. Henry Jones's book, Psychological Evolution and the Intention of Evil, a Scientific Exposition, has been edited by Timothy Wingate. THD, updated, referenced, and is now the invention of evil. Evil is not what you have been told it is. Evil wears a face of normalcy. Evil hides in plain sight. Evil has wounded you. Evil has tricked you into wounding others. Evil can be overcome with truth and the courage to act. A no-holds-barred examination of what evil is and where it came from, how to recognize it and how to stop it, and how to heal your mind from evil's effects. Get it today at libertyunderattack.com forward slash invention of evil. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash invention of evil. The link to purchase on Amazon is there as well.